Hi creative friends, my name is Ashley the Thrifty Chica. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can take a pre-made image in Cricut Design Spaces library and create some super cute custom PJs. These are so easy to make. You can make them into gifts, um, to sell, or just for yourself. I think they're so fun and who doesn't like wearing something that makes you feel a little extra fancy. So I'm going to walk you through all the steps that you need to know and it's super easy. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos, and give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. So let's go ahead and get started with the new PJs. Let's talk about what supplies you'll need for this project. You're going to need a Cricut machine. I'm using the Cricut Joy for this tutorial, but you can totally use the Maker or the Explorer series machines. A lint roller. I like to get mine from Dollar Tree. A weeding tool. I'm using holographic iron-on in two separate colors. If you're interested in picking up any Cricut supplies, I'll leave affiliate links in the description box along with the coupon code so you can save a little extra. And I'm using these PJs from Target that are super cute. They're kind of like silky um, type of material and they're surprisingly inexpensive. Um, Target had different colors and versions. Um, I was tempted to go back and pick up more. So if you're looking for a nice gift idea for someone, this is such a great idea. Uh, because who doesn't love comfortable PJs, especially ones that are custom to you. So let's go ahead and work on this project. We're going to get everything set up in the computer. We're working with the Cricut Joy and we're working with holographic smart iron on. So for this one, there's a shiny side and then there is the reverse side, which is kind of a matte side. We're going to cut this shiny side down as you work with iron on. Make sure that you've selected the mirror option because it will reverse the design so that it shows up the correct way. material and get our next slice of material ready. I'm making sure to place this shiny side down as well. Okay, our project is finished. Our next step is to cut away the excess iron-on that we're not going to use and that way we can save it for another project. I really love the colors on these. I can't wait to see how they turn out on the project. Remember if you have any scraps you can save them and use them on a mat with your joy and that way you're not um, wasting anything extra. Now we're gonna work on weeding our project. This is where you're gonna break out your weeding tool. And we're also going to use our lint roller. This is really handy whenever you're working with um, vinyl. So the key for this is we wanna make sure that we're working on um, the design. You can kind of see it through on the holographic one. This is one of the neat things about when you're working with holographic um, iron-on is you can see the etching on the design. Normally when you're working with iron-on, you won't be able to see through to the front. So. Um, it gives you a little bit of a bonus on that. So what we're going to do is start in a corner and this is the shiny side, this is the matte side with the adhesive. I'm gonna take my tool and just use it to help pierce that section so that we can lift up. Then we're gonna lift back on this. Remember, whenever you're working with a project, if you have too much going on in your hands at the same time, as far as you're lifting a bunch of iron-on off, you can always take your tools and cut away the sections, and that way you can just focus on one small section at a time. So in this case, it's splitting the design off two different directions. It's gonna be easier if I cut it, and then I come back to that section after I've worked on this section for a while. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lightly remove this. You don't want to pull too hard when you're working with iron-on because you can pull up the design um, if you're not careful. So I just like to work very slowly and patiently on these projects. If you encounter any resistance, like right here, there's resistance, that's a clue that I need to stop pulling on that section and just work on another section and come back to that one because there's too many directions getting pulled at the same time. 
And iron-on, I find, is one of the easiest things to weed. I find it, you know, very easy to play around with. Um, it doesn't require a lot of um, knowledge as far as time that you've, you've spent um, working on it. You know, larger projects with um, permanent vinyl especially can be a little bit more challenging. When you use something like iron-on, it's really great as a beginner-friendly type of project. And if you come to some sections where it's a little harder to get your um, your iron-on out of there, make sure you use your tool and you can kind of roll this over and lift up with it and it helps to release um, your material from the backing here. If you have a piece that comes off, just make sure to save it and you can place it back right on the carrier sheet. The carrier sheet is sticky behind it, so you should be able to line it back up and you should be able to also see the etchings that are behind it, so it makes it a little bit easier to make sure it's lined up. Now we're down to all of these tiny pieces. This is where I'm really gonna make use of my lint roller. Um, whenever you're removing a lot of tiny pieces, you just wanna make sure you have something handy to catch all of them, especially if you're working on something like iron-on vinyl. Iron-on vinyl is very likely to stick to the project when you're um, working on it and you apply heat to it and it'll be very difficult to remove. So we wanna make sure that we don't let any spare iron-on pieces fall back into the design so it doesn't interfere um, with our completed design. Once you've finished with it, you're going to take a look at it by flipping it over. Just make sure that there's no spots that you've missed. And then we're going to start with weeding the letter out for our monogram. So as you can see, this project is in two different parts, and because of that, we're going to have a little bit more challenge in getting this to fit right in. This isn't something where you can usually just lift it and fit it right back into here. So I'm going to apply the letter first, and then we're going to go in and apply the outside portions, and that way we can make sure that it fits right in. Okay, so we're going to start heating up our Easy Press, and I'm going to turn this on to 330 degrees. I checked out the Cricut Heat Guide, and it gave us the exact temperature and time, and we're also going to set the bottom uh, timing to 30 seconds. While this is heating up, we're going to take our um, pajama top, and we're going to place it so that it's on our mat. Since this is a smaller project, we can actually place it so the mat is inside the shirt. And we're just going to line this up. This is where you'll take your lint roller and we're going to go over the section that we're working on. This is going to stick pretty hard since this is a lighter fabric, um, but just hold on to it and make sure that you run it over the areas that you're going to be applying the decal. So we're applying a two layered project and to do something like this, we wanna make sure that the first layer that we apply is with minimal time and heat. And the reason for this is because we're gonna press it completely with both pieces once we get this first set on here. So we don't wanna press this completely because if we pressed it completely and then we added this piece and pressed it again, it would warp and bubble and um, possibly remove the bottom layer here. So we're gonna go ahead and um, figure out where we want this to be centered and um, the nice thing is you can kind of use the other portion in there to help you out too for centering everything. So we're going to be placing it so that it's like that in here. If you have any heat resistant tape this is a great time to break it out. I like to use it if I'm working with something that's a larger decal or if I'm worried about it moving around because this is something that is a um, a bendy type of piece. This one has a, a harder plastic on it. I'm gonna go ahead and add just a couple little pieces of tape to help this stay in place when I'm ready to adhere it. And I'm gonna repeat that on this one as well. So we have our mat inside our shirt. We've lint rolled it, and now we're gonna use our parchment paper on top. We're gonna to preheat this for five seconds. 
I'm just going to place this right over and hold this with light pressure for five seconds. And what this does is it preps this, this area that we're working on to make sure that it's ready to receive that heat. So we're going to go ahead, I'm going to use this as my template because I know exactly where this is going to get placed based on that. So this is going to go right here. place this down and I'm going to go ahead and place this over. We're only heating this for a very small fraction of the time. So this is supposed to be heated for 30 seconds. I'm going to heat this for 10 seconds and then we're going to lift this up, let this cool down completely. While this cools down, once it's ready and it's completely cooled down, I'll lift the carrier sheet off and then we can apply this one right over it. Okay, this is cooled down enough. We can start removing this. It's not 100% cooled down. It's just slightly, like, barely warm. So I think it should still be okay. I don't want to um, add too much heat to this before we get started. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready to apply this next section. I'm just going to line this up, and we're using the... Um, monogram as basically our guide for where this is going to line up. And then once we're happy with the positioning, we can place this down. We're going to place the sheet right back over it and we're going to heat this for the 30 seconds with light pressure. flip this inside out the other direction so that we can heat it again. I'm just flipping this. I want to heat the back side of this section so I'm just placing my mat right back in here and laying this back up. So we have our sheet here. We're going to place this back over. This is asking us for us to seal this for 15 seconds. So I'm going to start the timer on this. So now we need to let this cool down. I'm just going to place this on here and leave it nice and flat and just leave it alone. Let it cool down completely. That way you can adhere as best as possible. Okay, this is cooled down. We're ready to remove this and I'm just going to lift up. Remember, if you're working on a project and it's it's coming up on here, you can add um, half of the time necessary um, with the same amount of heat and that way it sets your project a little bit better. So what do you guys think of the finished project? I really love mixing the two um, holographic materials. They look so nice together. Um, I can't wait to show you guys another project using the Cricut Monogram Maker. So if you want to use this pre-made one, this one is super easy to use. You can use the link below. And I think we're going to do another video showing you how you to build a custom monogram. So if you guys are excited about that, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you're having a wonderful day.